AI is coming for our jobs. That's the call which we hear fairly often. And I don't think that's been the case for musicians. So far, AI tools really have been limited to doing the kind of things which you couldn't do. So stem splitting is probably the best example. A couple of videos I've linked in the description of mine looking at this in more depth if you're not sure what that is or what's available. But it's doing something which you, you just couldn't do with conventional tools and means, etc. As far as generative AI is concerned, the kind of things that everybody has been going crazy about is generally text-based. So large language models, things like ChatGPT, where they can appear human and they can generate text. Although, in fact, what they're doing is effectively probability based on context, etc., Generation of images is probably a little more interesting because you can put in a text prompt and get an image out that certainly I've got zero artistic ability, so I wouldn't be able to generate the kind of things I could do in a few minutes. And often they are good enough. They're not as good as if you were working with an artist and you could fine tune things, etc. But in many cases, typing in, I want a blue furry animal to be jumping off a giant building you'll get a thing that I couldn't draw. You know, I, as I say, I have no visual artistic ability. Music generation has not really reached that state so far. So there are services, again, linked in the uh, RipX video, where you can type in a prompt and you get some music out, but it's not release quality. It was, it was interesting. The, there are lyrics, etc. It generates melodies but it's not a final end result. It's the kind of thing that might be an inspirational song start if you're feeling a little short of ideas on any given day. But the subject to today's video, I think, changes that because I think the results that I've seen here are the kind of thing that make me think, you know what, there's a significant number of people who are going to be replaced by this. Let's take a look and see if you agree. So here we are on the site, and as you can see, it looks like, you know, a lot of these other kind of things. You can pick a category. It looks like a cross between Spotify and Netflix, doesn't it, but with some generation at the top. You need to sign in with a social media account or Google, etc. So I've done that. You can see I'm signed in with Google. There's no email option at the moment. And then you've got the generation section at the top. So you can hit some dice just to get some rando element in here, or you can put something in. So I'm actually going to put in the prompt that I put in in the other video, to be fair. So let's just put some of these in. House. Yeah, um, I think maybe doing it like this. So, so maybe we'll just try and make it as per instrumental yeah we want it instrumental and no, in fact you know what let's do auto generated lyrics like we did before and then I'm just going to click create so we'll see how long this takes but meanwhile Let's go and have a listen to some of these examples. So in the electronic sort of staff selection, we've got this first one. So we've got hard techno, apparently. Let's have a listen. I think generally we get the idea there. So that's, that's you know, that's reasonably coherent. You can hear some sort of artifacting in there, but it kind of sounds right for the style. So there's some others in here as well. Let's just listen to Synthetic Dreams. And we can see the, all of the prompts which have been put in here. You know, clearly the mix isn't great you know the piano is too loud
again, I think we get the idea. It's possible. You could just put this in. You could remix it. You could extend it, etc. There's There's a lot you could do. If you need to do something like this uh, quickly, this would be a tool I think a lot of people would use. And then you could say you could use it as a as a final piece of music for a lot of people because, as I'll say later on, I don't think a lot of people care as much about music and the quality of it in terms of technical quality of it as uh, many of us might like to think. Let's look at some other examples because this, I think, is where this really takes off. So here's one from the jazz playlist. This is called Archtop Odyssey. I think that's interesting because the, the the chord changes are reasonably mundane and then we have some interest so we've got this you know that's that's a bit left field and exactly the kind of thing which would be stylistically accurate also as a guitarist listening to the guitar uh, it is a guitar, but it kind of isn't. Uh, it it sounds right because it's somebody playing, sounds like somebody playing with their, their thumb, playing octaves. It sounds sort of Wes Montgomery, that kind of neck of the woods. It's, it's interesting that it's picked up on this detail. So I think that's pretty impressive. Now, if we go deeper with the jazz, we get this. And this, this is the first thing I actually heard from this. And this was what made me think... Uh, there's trouble ahead because, well, have a listen. Yeah, I mean, while obviously that may not be everybody's taste, certainly I'm super impressed by that. I think that sounds incredible. And you can imagine that could be extended, etc. because clearly it wouldn't be a 30-second long track. It would be, you know, 8, 9, 15 minutes, etc. that kind of thing. But that would be really interesting to hear what it does if that was a longer track rather than just a 30-second sample. But there's a lot in there. It would take me a long time to create anything like that as a player, certainly. Another thing pointed out by somebody is the ability to make sort of fun stroke parody songs for friends. So this is actually something I did a few years ago with my wife. She made uh, Where's Your Keys, Nina, instead of um, Where's Your Car, Debbie, um, which was interesting and went down well. But this just means you can do this, uh, whether or not this was custom lyrics, I'm not sure, but it, it certainly works. We'll have a listen to some of it. So, you know, stylistically, again, it's it's got this just right, the kind of double track vocals. It sounds it sounds just right. I think this is this is really impressive. Not sure why it's only got one heart, but there we go. Um talking of stylistically, right? Let's have a listen to this example. Yes, barbershop. So I, I'm sure the barbershop police will be along and go, well, actually, it's not barbershop because of X, Y, and Z. But again, this is an impressive demonstration of this. Baby on board, how I've adored that sign on my car's window pane. 
the bounce in my step Loaded with pep Cause I'm driving in the carpool lane Call me a square Friend, I don't care That little yellow sign can't be ignored I'm telling you it's mighty nice Each trip's a trip to paradise With my baby on board. Yeah, again, I think that's pretty impressive. I think most people wouldn't question whether that was generated by some maths. And the final example, of course, June, the Broadway musical. So this, again, I'll let this play. This is, I think this is really superb. Paul Atreides of Arakeen, the greatest leader we've ever seen. They say that he's the listener guy. Eyes bright blue and hair jet black. You should see him ride on a sandworm's back. Lead us to victory, you soul. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I it would take me weeks to make something like that. Obviously, that's not my my bag, but you can hear there's stylistically there's so many things in there which have been cleverly taken. It's learned that, and it knows what to do. Well, here we are. It's created this, so this didn't take too long. But let's have a listen and see if we can play it. Cause I'm the beat of the rhythm. Rhythm, yeah. That drop just won't be the same. I don't think, I don't think so. Cause I'm the heart of the night, so bright. I don't think, I don't think so. Your groove just ain't right. So there's some elements in there I think you would probably recognise. The vocal sounds quite like uh, Faithless, so I think it's probably taken it from there. There's some weird discordant elements in there, but it seems to have done what I've asked. So let's see what the alternative one is. Please don't say it's done. Gotta keep the rhythm going. Feel the beat, it's strong. Please don't say it's done. Yeah, again, uh, sort of an interesting start. Certainly nowhere near as formed as some of the other ones in here, but this is much more coherent than previous things that I've created. So this this seems to work reasonably well. It's the kind of thing, probably need to spend more time learning how to prompt it appropriately, possibly putting some lyrics in and seeing how it does it, because those were uh, sort of nothing lyrics, but then it was generated by a computer, wasn't it? So what would we expect? So let's just see what it does here. Yeah, so we've got the uh, we've got the lyrics in here, etc. And yeah, our dynamic duo. So I'm just at the very earliest steps of learning to use these kind of things. I think it's inevitable that we'll have to uh, learn to use these kind of tools if you want to keep up. So here I'm going to extend this track and see how this works. So we're going to add an intro. So let's just add an intro, make it instrumental, and then we're going to extend this and see how we get on with that. So here we are. It was about 10 minutes or so for it to generate that. I'm going to click here. Hopefully we'll end up on the right tracks. And there we are. So we've got Quantum Leaps and Labyrinth of Tone. So let's have a listen to what this remix did. So it's added 35 seconds or so. Let's... See what we got. <laughs> 
as the intro. change tempo there, but I've played with worse drummers than that, I can tell you. Let's see what Labyrinth of Tones has got to offer us, other than obviously amusingly named tracks. one's better so that that worked for me so then you could extend that again so i guess we'd click extend let's add a section after and so on um let's add an outro let's see how we go with that so here we are um interestingly quantum leaps has ended up at zero we'll see whether it actually is zero but let's see what modal spirals goes for with our outro so obviously we've got everything else we had let's go to about let's see if it so we've got our trumpet solo Okay, not super coherent, but again, not a complete disaster. I've I've played worse gigs than that, I can tell you. Is this going to play or is this nothing? This is lying. Right, let's see what we got this time. Yeah, again, you know, that's a that's, it's difficult because I I've played I've played worse things than that in front of um moderate sized crowds. So yeah, yeah, that, that's I'm I'm still quite impressed with this. Say so the the once it gets to a point where it's totally coherent, it's it's gonna be impressive and it's taken such a big leap compared to things I've heard recently, you think it's it's not far off. I'm not sure what this has been trained on. But it, it seems to be pretty canonical, and I almost like the fact there's a few splits on the trumpet where you'd expect splits on the trumpet from a suboptimal player. So that's pretty interesting. So that, I think, is a glimpse into the future under our robot overlords. Um, there's been a few days I can remember when I first saw a technology which came to dominate 
something. So I remember the first time I saw MIDI in action in a sequencer, and I was like, oh, that's incredible. Um, I remember the first day when I saw a demonstration of VST effects on an early version of Cubase VST that was being demonstrated before it was released. It was like, oh, effects are just going to be on computers. And the same when I first saw convincing subtractive synthesizer in uh, VST instruments. And then literally over the next few months, I just got rid of all mine because I knew they were going to never be worth the same again. And I didn't have to have a massive rack of, you know, I had racks and racks of things. It was a nightmare. Um, and this, this is, this feels like that kind of moment. It's like, this is the point where it goes from being sort of party novelty to like, oh, you can put your thing in and it comes up with a meh version of a track. Whereas some of these that it's come up with, I think they're finished, you know, or they're, they're near as damn it finished. And it would take me a long time to make them. Whereas the other things I've heard previously, you think, yeah, you know what, I can, I can make a better sounding version of that pretty quickly. Whereas this now has got to the 80, 90% version where it's like, eh, would it be worth spending all that time? I'm not sure. So the thing is, where does this leave us as uh, musicians, creators, etc.? Well, I think there's there's two sides to that coin. Clearly, a lot of work is going to disappear. Uh, the kind of stuff where you get commissioned to do things. So I've not had a lot of this, but I have had some. One that springs to mind was somebody who was going to make a dance stroke exercise brand, and she had an idea. I think it was about 60 songs which needed to be created with specific styles and BPMs, etc., to allow these workout programs to be done to them. And I spent a couple of weeks uh, doing the sort of rough versions of all of these. It never went anywhere, but it's the kind of things that I know people uh, do all the time. A lot of that will be gone because you can just sign up to this website. You can say, you know, house 120 BPM, four minutes long, it will be done. I'm sure in the future there will be more control over this. There may be like a DAW-like interface where it plays back and then you can pick a specific time and say, oh, here we want to go to the bridge or whatever. And that can't be that far away. And when that happens, the the criticism people have of this is it's that it's pretty vague because you just type it in and you get what you get and you can remix it, but the prompts are, are difficult to engineer. Once you get to the point where you can say, three minutes 20, I want it to do this, all of that control will be enough for most people. In addition, listening wise, I think most people, not everybody, but I think a lot of people, when they just put on music, they don't really care about the artist, this, that, and the other. They just put on, you know, if they're having a dinner party, they might go, oh, you know, play a smooth jazz playlist. They're not going to ever care about any of that, where it's come from, the artist, the bio, the struggling, this, that, and the other. They're not going to care about the cocaine addiction. None of that. In the next year or so, streaming services are going to be absolutely inundated with auto-generated content. So I'm not a great programmer, but I'm reasonable enough that I reckon within a week of trying, I could set up a system which would put in prompts into this website, download the audio, use ChatGPT to create an artist bio and use uh, a video and image service to create maybe a bit of video and an image of the artist and album artwork, etc., and then upload that to Spotify. And then it could do it tens, hundreds, or thousands of times a day. I don't know what the limits are. I'm sure there's some way you'd be able to do this. And then, yeah, you would have flooded the field with, as Steve Bannon says, which isn't a good thing, but if one of those takes off or any of them generate a bit of revenue, you're going to end up uh, earning, potentially earning a living in the brief time before everyone else catches up and does all this. You know, there are already people who are earning money on Spotify by generating the kind of music that people search for. So they've optimised for that. And now it's going to be possible to do that times 10, times 100 or 1,000 via AI. Because this is now at the point where I think most people listening to this wouldn't think, ah, oh, it's done by an AI. They'd just think it's a bit of music. Maybe the quality's not great. Maybe it's a bit annoying in places. But 
it's like white goods and you know most people's cars most people don't care that much about their car they just care that it works and it gets them from a to b they're not going to go oh you know what it's got the latest innovation some people are kind of people who are watching this channel are going to be the people who are going to care about that but i think most people aren't anyway two things firstly if you create anything interesting with this please post it below and i'd love to hear it uh, particularly if you've got a story to do with it, you know, not just, oh, I made loads of generic house, but if you come up with something funny or interesting or whatever, I'd like to hear it. Secondly, genuine discussion about this. I'm not sure where I stand with this. Say at the moment, I'm probably feeling a little bit bruised because you think, oh, you know what? Here they come. Uh, but I could be wrong. I don't think it's happened in the world of text generation because there's always the BS element. Chat GPT just make stuff up. They call it hallucinating. I would call it BSing. Does that matter with music? I'm not sure it does. Oh, anyway, we, it remains to be seen. If this is an artifact to the point where, you know, this is where everything went south, then we'll know, won't we? Anyway, I'd appreciate your comments and discussion below. Uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting, if nothing else, and we'll see you again soon for hopefully some more useful music tech tuition.